Hey, howdy, hey, it's Robotnik is Sexy, and this is another Gen V battle I have for you against Servo once again. And, uh, this, uh, he's got a rain team, I've got a sand team, doesn't lead with a polytoad, leads with General Electric. Um, I predict the trick, I honestly do, but honestly here, I just want to put up Stealth Rocks, because I believe... He's, yes, he has a Dragonite on his team, so basically, if I don't have Stealth Rocks, I am going to get raped. That's basically how it goes, because uh, Dragonite is so overpowered this generation, which I actually appreciate, because, you know, he's, he's definitely one of the coolest dragons out there. Um, uh, toxic on the Switch, and it works out for me, because it is E-Electros, and E-Electros can do pretty much nothing to me, although it could do Grass Knot, so I'm gonna scout for that. Um, but he just, uh, ends up going for Coil instead, so I guess he doesn't have Grass Knot, which is fine. Um, although, it brings me to question why he brought in E-Electros in the first place, then. Uh, so we're gonna ha kind of have a buffing war, but I have an advantage because he's taking toxic damage and sandstorm damage, and I have roost and cosmic power. So uh, yeah, and he's taking recoil on top of lo on top of lapa, on top of lapa that. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna roost in his face here. I uh, don't know how familiar he is with Siglyph, but he is a freaking beast on sand teams. Uh, unofficially, uh, this is just my opinion, but um, on any weather team. He, like, I want to, I could put this guy on a hail team, and he would just, like, clean up. It would be really cool. Um, so I basically take him down by sitting there and roosting, which is all cool. Uh, finally goes into his frogman, which is a slippy, and he does a switch, and, uh, yeah, we do a double switch here. It's really kind of curious. I don't know why, um, he did that, especially, um, when you find out later what kind of polytoad he has. Um... So, uh, he uses Protect, I don't know why, switches out again, uh, a very, very interesting playstyle, um, definitely, he's definitely confusing me, uh, I guess he switches out to make his weather dominant again, we have a little weather dance, um, but the beautiful thing about Dino Saucer is, um, your attacks, uh, your weapons do not affect me, of course, um, you know, I take no damage from Ice Beam, but, you know, I'm gonna get frozen, guaranteed, um, but I was tricked a choice specs, and um, uh, a lot of his things do not appreciate a fire blast. Um, Toxicroak and Ferrothorn, um, especially. So uh, I was definitely planning on going for that, but you know, as fate would have it, I've got to be frozen. But the funny thing is, uh, being top tier in all Tyranitar is almost as useful as he is frozen uh, when he is thawed, which is pretty sick. Um, I actually do thought, um, which I didn't think was going to happen at all, and wouldn't you know it, I miss Fire Blast, so, you know, uh, uh, you know, that really teaches me a lesson to get frozen, you know, it's, uh, yeah, I don't know, it sucks. Uh, go for the Fire Blast again on the Switch, and it does a pretty good amount, actually, thanks to Specs damage, um, and, uh, he's just going to use Hypnosis a lot, and I wanted to Hypnosis fodder Dinosaucer here, uh, cause he's useful in any status condition. And then he misses a second time, cause, you know, Hypnosis is so low accuracy, and then I think to myself, hey, that's really stupid, why don't I send in Humbawumba, who has a status already with my burn or whatever thing. So, basically, I get a free roost, which is all good in the hood. Monsanto want to be, um... Yeah, so that's cool. Uh, I'm gonna sign up Pizza because it's kind of uh, the perfect time to do it, except he's gonna Leech Seed Protect me. Um, uh, I've used Ferrothorn before, I know that they usually use Protect after Leech Seed, so I'm gonna switch out and go into Arenaclus here, protecting uh, that Protect, and uh, that works out fine for me because, as all y'all should know, uh, Arenaclus walls the poop is out of Ferrothorn. Uh, Ferrothorn really can't do a single thing. Almost take it out with a Focus Blast, um, uh, not quite. Um, but it does bring him down to, um, Stealth Rock killing range, and, uh, I guess he didn't know about how Magic Guard is immune to Leech Seed. It's a nice perk. It's a nice perk. 
uh, switches into General Electric, who I just get a useless crit on, um, because I would have just used um, Psyshock again anyway. And there's a very curious game mechanic here that I wasn't aware of that I discovered by playing this match. Uh, Pokemon who come in and are uh, fainted by Stealth Rocks or Entry Hazards, um, they do not affect your Trick Room turns. So those two turns where the guys were sent in and impaled in the face by a giant spiky rock uh, do not affect my Trick Room. So now I am free to have an, a Trick Room take out his Frogman uh, number two, which is a Toxicroak, and he's down to his last already. And, um... Yeah, it's really, I should have not sent in Dinosaur because it would have been really cool to Ice Beam him, um, but I kind of had to Death Fodder something just because Dragonite is such an offensive force, um, but it was this close to a 6-0, this close, and I didn't even use a Smash and Pass a Smear Goal. Uh, I just used an Uber Defensive Stolly Sand Team. Um, which I think is more fun anyway, but I can see the appeal. I actually used a baton passing Espeon um, for a, w a long time in Standard, and uh, it was really fun, because like, I would baton pass Calm Mines to Hydreigon, and then he would like Draco Meteor, and, like two things, and it would like, guarantee the kill. Uh, so I'm basically just going to stall him out here, um, Get the burn on him uh, with my uh, measly powered store power. That's enough to take him out. And that is the match, YouTube. Uh, please check out my LP um, that I've started. So see you later.